like to call this meeting to order of the Geneva Historic Preservation Commission for Tuesday, November 15th, 2022. Um, if I'll call the roll. Uh, Mr. Hartman? Here. Uh, Ms. Jensen? Here. Ms. McManus? McManus? Here. Mr. Solomon? Here. Ms. Zinke? Here. And I am Paul Zomer, and I am here. Uh, we have a quorum. Okay. Um, Mr. Lambert, you have something to say about the meeting minutes? Yes, the, the, the minutes were not attached because we do not have the minutes yet at this point. Um, so our, our December meeting, we will have both the September and the um, uh, September minutes and the minutes from tonight's meeting. Our recording secretary has resigned, and so um, our uh, assistant planner, Matt Busing, is filling in tonight uh, in that role. So we appreciate that. But we will have two months of meet, me, meeting minutes at the uh, December meeting. Very good. Thank you, Michael. I guess next on our agenda is the five minute field guide. So that's back to you, Michael. Thank you, Chairman Zelmer. Well, uh, with the arrival of cold weather, I thought it might be an appropriate time to discuss an architectural feature which exists in many pre-1930s homes, a feature that seems to puzzle and intrigue most people who encounter them. Have you ever gone into a basement and noticed that there's a concrete ledge all the way around the perimeter? It's usually about three feet below the ceiling and, and the walls um, extend down to the basement floor. Sometimes the walls are very square and neat, and sometimes they are sloping uh, towards the center of the room. This is what's called a Michigan basement. A Michigan basement refers to a crawl space that has been modified, usually by hand, to create a larger and deeper space. As I said, the ledge may be neatly laid with brick or stone, although in some instances the walls may be irregular or rounded with only a thin layer of stone or concrete as the finished wall. In the most primitive applications, the soil may be left exposed to the basement. No one is really clear to the origin of the term Michigan basement. However, the function is tied to the evolution of central heating for homes. Most homes built in the American Midwest after the mid-1830s were heated with cast iron and later sheet metal parlor stoves placed in the most significant rooms of the house. Wood was the fuel source before railroads were established. With the coming of the railroad, soft coal became a more common fuel source. As the Victorian era evolved, so did the design of the parlor stove, which were manufactured in all sorts of designs, shapes, and sizes. By the mid-1850s, central heating systems were introduced into American homes. However, they were usually reserved for the most wealthy in a community. The heating furnaces required a great deal of floor space as well as open space to run the numerous sheet metal ducts that piped warm air to multiple rooms from a single furnace source. However, most homes were built over shallow crawl spaces because there was little need for a cellar, except for small areas for either food storage where the ground was cooler or for use as a storm shelter. The foundation walls for many mid 19th century homes did not extend far beneath the ground level. Shallow crawl spaces assisted with the ventilation of a house and allowed the cool damp air to circulate into the occupied floors during the hot summer months. However, the shallow spaces did not provide enough depth for the installation of a central furnace system. Consequently, many crawl spaces were dug out by hand. The process of making a deeper basement to accommodate a central heating system required a bit of engineering knowledge. The setback is required so that the excavation of the lower basement walls did not disturb the existing exterior foundation walls and the superstructure of the building above. Therefore, a Michigan basement ends up with a full depth seven to eight foot basement within, um, within an area surrounded by a two to four foot wide shelf all the way around the perimeter of the basement. When the ledge is built and finished neatly, it serves a secondary purpose, but not a primary purpose, of providing storage for household goods or canned goods such as fruits and vegetables. 
So the next time you encounter a Michigan basement or someone asks why a shelf runs all around the perimeter of an old basement, you now as commissioners and the audience have an answer. Are there any questions? All righty. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Next on our agenda is review of conceptual development plans, uh, 330 South River Lane, case number 2022-088. Thank you, Chairman Zellmer. Uh, this project is coming before the commission as a concept plan. It is located in the far southeastern corner of the local Geneva Historic District and in the southeastern corner of the central Geneva Historic District listed in the National Register of Historic Places. It is located on River Lane, which we've talked a lot about over um, um, many different uh, projects, but this was part of Kate Raftery's beautification project, converting uh, former shanties into uh, respectable homes. And this particular house is located in the last phase of that beautification project, which was completed by Frank W. Renwick and is the Riverside addition to Geneva. Uh, I'm assuming all of you have uh, either visited the property or, or looked at the property online. It's a small bungalow that was built in 1927 um, for Dominic Emma. Uh, the Emmas sold their land to Frank Renwick, who developed the Riverside Edition, and this house was built um, for the son Dominic um, upon the sale of that land. The house was expanded in 1948, as I outlined in the uh, staff report. Um, it was um, built uh, by local contractor John um, Blumendahl, and or Blumendahl, and um, uh, consisted of a new kitchen above a uh, sunken garage level. So again, the house is uh, brick with a shingle-sided gables um, and is in the bungalow style. The house was remodeled in 2010. At that time, uh, the historic window openings were re uh, filled with new windows. Uh, the old windows were replaced, and the front door was replaced at the same time as well. That's also when the iconic blue shingle roof was installed um, uh, as part of that renovation. Uh, and my understanding is the, the exterior of the uh, house was painted also as part of that 2010 renovation. So the house sits in an interesting area of uh, River Lane. As you know, River Lane has homes that date, to the mid, from, date from the mid 19th century all the way to the mid 20th century. Um, so it's a quite a variety of residential uh, styles. And then in approximately four years ago, um, there was uh, an, a house that was raised and it was replaced with three new infill homes that are uh, contemporary in uh, design but traditional in their architectural influences. Um, the neighborhood is a combination of one story, one and a half story, and two story residences. Um, and, and they vary from lot to lot. So here's another view of the, of the neighborhood looking at the subject property in the background um, at, at the left. And again, you can see that um, this, this particular area is somewhat uh, diminut diminutively scaled in the houses uh, that, that pre-existed the infill homes. Uh, the house has a one-story home to the uh, north uh, directly across the street is a one-story ranch that faces the or that uh, opens onto the Fox River, and then directly west of the um, uh, subject property is a non-contributing property that was built after 1966 and was just recently, within the last uh, 12 months, completely uh, remodeled into a more contemporary uh, exterior. There are some existing architectural challenges that uh, have been identified by the applicant. Uh, one of them on the left, you can see the subterranean uh, garage has a couple of issues. Uh, there is a problem with uh, water and moisture is evidenced by the, um, the uh, discoloration of the masonry wall. You can also see that the garage door is a, um, if you look closely, is not a regular height garage door and the door, um, uh, 
it's a modern door on the opening, but it doesn't close all the way even when the door is all the way down. Um, so it's been kind of modified to make a door work. Um, and then the upstairs uh, level was finished into bedrooms at some point, uh, probably after 1948. Um, and the um, uh, second floor suffers from headroom issues, um, low ceiling clearances in almost every room or in every room up on the second floor. Um, so you can kind of see what some of the conditions are with uh, headspace and the challenges of furnishing those rooms. The proposed um, site that's been uh, uh, provided by the applicant shows a small addition to the rear of the uh, home at the first floor. Um, there are proposals to modify the interior, again, which are not subject to our review. And then the addition of a detached garage um, uh, to the rear or to the west of the, um, the, the, the house itself. The um, uh, setbacks appear at this, at this point, they all appear to uh, conform with the zoning requirements for this lot. So just to help everybody orient themselves as we go through the discussions this evening, the yellow portion is the original house built in 1927. The orange section of, uh, to, the, to, to the top is the 1948 edition. The pink area or pinkish purple area is the um, proposed uh, addition at the ground level. The green areas are open porches and the blue area is the proposed detached garage. Um, I'm not going to go through all of these in detail. I'll let the applicant cover that, but what I've provided in the next few slides are some comparative slides. Um, I've tried to keep them as close to scale as possible so that you can kind of relate one to the other. Um, the, this is the existing first floor and the proposed first floor plans, and so you can see what, how the expansion is um, um, impacting or, or modifying the uh, historic floor. There's a couple of things to point out that have been highlighted in my staff report and also in your, probably your reading of the uh, Secretary of Interior standards for rehabilitation. Uh, the first is the addition is shown flush to the uh, historic bungalow on the south wall, the Fulton Street side. Also, you'll note that the proposal is, is to um, rearrange the historic uh, fenestration or historic window openings on the south side, the Fulton Street side as well. Um, at the second floor, um, again, the addition also is, is uh, flush with the south wall of the historic bungalow. So uh, I've now put together uh, the images that have been provided by the applicant uh, side by side. So we have the River Lane facade as existing and as proposed. A uh, couple of things to highlight. Um, on the left are um, uh, architectural features that are characteristic of this home. So again, the subterranean garage with a uh, uh, door and then the typical bungalow uh, dormer to the south. And then um, there are uh, two windows that are being proposed to uh, be retained um, in speaking with the building department that may be an issue that, that might have to be an altered window because the bedroom is being proposed to be altered and um, the general application of the building code here at Geneva is if a bedroom is altered then it must meet modern uh, egress so that might have to um, be addressed down the road. The blue area shows basically the massing at the uh, River Lane facade that's being proposed to be um, added. This is the existing Fulton Street facade. Again, the uh, critical or the defining architectural features of the south facade are the materials themselves, the rock face um, foundation, the uh, brick walls, uh, the historic windows, and then the typical bungalow dormer. Um, this is the proposed uh, Fulton Street facade. And again, just trying to uh, give you a graphic indication of what's new and what's old. So the yellow is where the historic windows are located and where the windows are being, in, in conjunction with where the windows are proposed to be um, uh, located with the renovation. The blue area is the mass area that's being proposed to be added to the um, uh, residence, and then the orange is, of course, the detached garage. Um, 
the rear addition is uh, somewhat visible to Fulton Street. We have typically uh, not um, uh, reviewed a rear elevation heavily that is um, uh, visible from a side street, um, but we, I did outline the in, in red on the right, the portion of the rear elevation that is somewhat visible from uh, Fulton Street, um, both the historic, uh, or not, all of, the, all of that at the rear that's visible from Fulton Street is a new addition. And then uh, we do not review the, uh, the side yard typically um, because it's, it's a very tight lot for one thing. As you see, it's only a few feet off of the property line, um, but I'm providing these just so you have a full 360 degree view of the project so you can kind of relate um, uh, the floor plans and, and, the, and the massing. So again, this is the proposed right side elevation. And again, kind of graphically what is being proposed to be added in a, in a massing um, uh, concept. So we're always happy when an applicant provides uh, renderings that give you kind of a real life view of what the um, property may look like with the proposed alterations. So these are renderings that were taken uh, based on the actual photographs from the River Lane uh, level. As you know, the house is raised quite a bit above a uh, River Lane. Um, so this is a view of what the proposal would look like in construct once constructed. Um, again, a view look going towards the north and the view of the altered garage uh, door opening with windows at the uh, far right. And then going back to the south and then a view of the uh, Fulton Street uh, facade or elevation um, uh, for, for you to get an idea of the massing all the way around. And then again, just to finish off so you can relate um, the plans to what the three-dimensional um, uh, house would look like with the proposed alterations. Uh, this is from the what would actually be the rear yard of the neighbor to the north, looking back at the at the house. So with that, I would like to turn the podium over to the applicants, which consists of um, the owners who are Igor and Juicy Leone and Todd Augustine from Augustine Custom Homes, who's the developer contractor, and Dan Marshall, uh, Marshall Dan Marshall, or Marshall Architects, I'm sorry. So with that, whoever would like to come forward and take it from there, I have all these slides available to you. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Juicy, and this is Igor. Um, uh, we are Geneva residents, and um, we have lived in Geneva for a while, uh, and we are also business owner in town. Uh, why um, I fell in love with this house, right? Um, so my parents um, were Italian immigrants, and when I was looking to uh, find a house um, closer to town, I find out that this house, um, people, immigrants from Italy lived in this house. Um, so being an immigrant, it's, it's a whole story on your own. You, you, you know, my parents moved here when they were young, and then they had four kids, and I happened to um, move back to Italy uh, when I was about two years old, and I, and I lived there for, for a long time until I was 25, and about, about 20 years ago, I came back here to the States, and I built my own family here. Um, so I, I, I was passing by and I saw this house and I, I had that European feeling and I start looking and, and digging into it and I find out some story about the house and I felt like to, for, a, for a house to be a home, uh, I feel like there needs to be a connection and I thought that was my connection. So I talked about it with my kids and uh, with my husband and we decide um, this could be something that we can we can, somewhere we can live in, and we can pass it along the line. We plan on living in this house, you know, for a long time. Hopefully my kids would also live there. This is something that we really embrace in our culture. Um, and uh, we definitely don't want to change the house, but we feel like we need to be able to live in the house. I'm 5'1". 
and I can't shower in that bathroom. Like, literally, it hits my head. So uh, it's something needs to be done to be able to, to, to live kind of comfortable. Uh, so that's when trying to raise the ceiling comes into, into place for us. So this is crucial for us to be able to live in that house. I have two kids. Alex is 14, freshman in Geneva High School. And my daughter, she is nine, Kati. So we would be able, like, we don't have a big family, but this house will be big enough for us to live and to live a comfortable life. So this is the reason why I bought this house. And I want to make sure that it's livable for, especially for my kids. Uh, they have the space that they need. Uh, and uh, um, hopefully we could make it work. This is really what I hope, that we could make it work. Uh, and we can keep that roots growing in town. And, and I, just, I just love this house. Just want to make it work. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dan Marshall from Marshall Architects. And um, Igor and Juicy and Todd approached me to try to work on a design. and. Um, we had a program to fit the number of bedrooms in there and we met with Michael and um, he suggested we draw up something and get it in front of you guys and ask for your input. So um, this solution that um, we've come up with, how do I move this forward, Michael, with the remote or? Oh, just to maybe to the renderings to show one of the, the front. Um, yeah, well, that's good. So um, we tried to keep the front, uh, per Michael's suggestion, as much as possible. And then um, we, the, the bedroom up front is very small, so we've, we've had to raise the, uh, raise the roof as, to try to get a bedroom size in there. And then we kept the the little two windows in the front, which Michael's right, that could be a problem with the egress windows. Um, and maybe we can work out a solution to make them look like that with a custom window or something. Um, but uh, we try to keep the, the right side of it down low and blend in with the existing roof as much as possible. Um, on the Fulton side, uh, it is flush uh, right now. and. Um, there's a little detail that we tried to make different. There's a concrete block on the base that we switched to. We just kept it all brick. It's very subtle, uh, but it would be a distinguishing factor between the addition and the, and the existing house. Um, we, the, the basement garage gets a lot of water, as Michael said, and um, it's not in good shape and it's not really big enough for a family uh, to use. So um, we're proposing to fill that in, but uh, as, as we talked we, with Michael, we would like to keep some kind of feature as a reminiscent of that. And that's why we are showing the three windows there where the garage door was. Um, this rendering shows horizontal siding being replaced. The, the siding is in super bad shape right now. Um, the, the existing two gables on the front could try to keep that existing siding, but it's in pretty bad shape. The fascia and soffit has been covered over with aluminum. We have no idea what's underneath that. Um, what we would propose to do, um, the Leones liked the horizontal siding when we did the rendering, so that's the current proposal. Um, we kicked around redoing shingle siding or that. We would like to try to get um, some kind of a lower maintenance material for the siding. So we're looking into either the LP smart siding or um, fiber cement siding. And then the, the trim and soffit, again, we haven't determined exactly what that's gonna be. We're looking for input on that. But um, well, we've been using the LP smart siding quite a bit lately. So the windows were replaced, as Michael said, with Anderson windows, which is that vinyl composite, um, or it's 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 a coating. It's not a it's not a clad, and they're pretty nice windows, and they're in good shape. 
uh, the trim on the outside of them is not in good shape. So um, that is also part of fixing up the house. Um, it's still a pretty small house uh, on a pretty small lot. So the garage is a two car garage. We just meet the uh, LCR requirements is really our controlling factor is the lot coverage, the impervious surface coverage. Um, the building areas within within the limits, no problem, but the, the lock coverage is what controls the addition. And the addition was pretty small. We just needed a little area in the back to rearrange the house to get a, a more modern kitchen for them to raise their family in. So, uh, I'd love to get your input and um, we would be excited to. I, I really like your your color coding because it shows how this historic houses go through these additions and how they keep keep evolving and keep living and I, I really feel like for this house to go to the next generation and not just deteriorate is is to allow some sort of addition so that we can get a new family in there and make new history and uh, I would love to get some input on this and keep the project moving. So I'd like to open it up for questions unless Todd has anything to say. No, I have here to answer any questions. I know I've worked with the HPC on some projects in town, so I respect your opinions and I was willing to work with you to try to bring some commonality to this and, and let the owners um, you know, uh, continue to, uh, I think, improve the home and you know, bring it up to some modern standards and, you know, build, build me memories and, and uh, you know, Todd, Todd, can you please come to the oh, microphone sorry. so we can get it recorded? George, you want to start? Okay. Uh, a couple things. So what's going to happen to the old garage? It's just it's all going to be filled in? Uh, it's going to be just ba basement, so we'll use it for basement space. Yeah. Okay. How are you going to correct? You said there's water issues with it. Oh, so. well, right now the ground slopes down to the garage door. We're going to fill the, that ramp that goes down in, pour a basement wall or pour a block basement wall in, waterproof it to not have that ramp anymore. So that would correct the water problems because then the, wa the ground would be sloping away from the house. Sorry, didn't explain that very well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I figured you were doing something with it, so yeah. But I'm working on the next one. <laughs> okay, Jewel. How many bedrooms does it currently have? Um, currently, just in here, two bedrooms that are um, very small, <laughs> and two teeny little closets and a teeny little kitchen. Um, there is an existing first floor on the previous slide you want to slide it back one uh, to the first floor there you go so over on the left there shows those two little bedrooms on the back of the house and um, so the f we're gonna we would propose to move the bedrooms upstairs and use that area for the kitchen and the dining room and that would give us uh, three bedrooms because uh, they have two kids and they're still not really big bedrooms but they're adequate sized any uh, anything from you Carolyn <coughs> Could you turn on your mic? Thank you. It's on. It was on before. There, there you go. go. Thank you. But then the red light disappears. It's on. It's on. It's on your mic. Oh, I see. see okay. All right. Um, looking at the first floor plan uh, that we have in our packet. Yes. Uh, the living room appears to be 11 8 by 17 7. The dining room 10 4 by 14 1. Correct. And these rooms 
are going to be turned into what? Uh, kind of a living room and a, more of a TV room. So there's, uh, you, you walk in and there would be a, like a sitting room. And we're calling it a sitting room in the drawings and then a TV room. Do we have that in our packet? Yes, uh, it's in the proposed packet on the first floor <coughs> plan. Yeah, it's in the... Well, I, I know, but it's just easier for me to actually see it in front of me. Sure, mm -hmm. I'd be glad to show. This is, no, this is this. Okay, okay, right? This is it. Okay, I got it now. Oh, nice. double-sided, okay. I see. And so the old kitchen will be turned into a study. So you have a sitting room, a TV room, a study on the first floor. Correct. With a kitchen. And then on the second floor. Kitchen, dining room, yeah, together. And then the second. Oh, kitchen and dining, I see it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Kind of a mud room. Okay. Um, Michael, the addition is about seven feet back. Is seven what we're feet added. back. Okay. Yeah. Michael, there's not a, a garage there right now? I thought there was a garage. The, the, the garage is just the one that's below the house. Yes. No, there's I a, meant in, there's in a the shed, back. There's a shed in the back, if I remember right. But isn't there a shed? Not a shed anymore? No, yeah. there's no okay. shed. There might have used to have been, but. Oh. <laughs> It's just a single car, one single door. In, in the front. Yeah, in the front. The very garage. narrow. And there's no low. garage in the back now. No. Oh. And it's okay. tough to get a car in that garage. I don't think a car's been oh, in I'm, there I'm, for I'm sure that, over that, 50 years that, at this that, point. That <laughs> okay. Yeah, I understand <clears> that you're saying that the siding is in poor shape, covered with aluminum right now, and that, that you would like to correct that. I could understand that. Um, I guess I would have to say this is this is not one of my favorite projects. Um, I think it fills up the lot a great deal. Can can we see the front of the house, please, on the screen? Yeah, it just. I think the addition overwhelms the house. And um, I would, I would, I would wish that the addition was lower and smaller. That that's my initial thought. Yeah, it's it's uh, interesting paradox because the existing second floor is so low that anything new looks large yet it's uh, pretty low ceiling <coughs> in the proposed second floor. It's not a tall ceiling or a tall mm -hmm. ridge mm -hmm. for a normal two-story house. Like the house to the south of it is much taller. It's got, you know, much, it's, this has got low first floors, low second floors, mm -hmm. like even in the proposed. Mm -hmm. So it, it isn't really that large of an addition, but it's the existing house is so little that it anything we do seems to look fairly large in relativity to the, to the existing house. Okay. It does feel like, you know, and looking, and this is a, a great look at uh, the differences in facade from existing to new. Yeah. No. And there is something about it because you've got that first gable, the one that's over the foyer, and then the next one that's over that main space in the existing and still remains to the, the proposed. And then it's almost like you have, you know, it goes from smaller to larger, and then it goes to yeah. what just appears in scale to be much larger. Mm -hmm. And I almost feel like it's taking away from the original facade, which is kind of the aim of the, the us as a, a commission is to make sure that the memory of what was still is visible and identifiable when you look at Michael, the facade, even mind? if it's an addition that's stepped back, because yeah. there is sort of that repeating form Mm -hmm. in larger scale, I think that's what's making it look mm -hmm. as, as big <clears throat> as it looks. And I, I, it it's, looks a little uh, troublesome in, at least in our body, where we're just trying to make sure that we, we're retaining things from the past and still having a memory of that. And I feel like this is one of the additions that I've seen in, um, 
I, and we have seen we we tend to uh, look at a lot of additions mm -hmm. and a lot of of revised spaces where you can kind of see that original facade, and then you can see the the new addition, but it doesn't overpower it, or maybe it's and maybe it's because there is already this sort of staged um, hierarchy already, and because of that, it's just kind of. Um, what, it just would you feels, mind switching to the uh, to the rendering because this the elevation is deceptive in that it shows that addition you know flat with the other addition or with the existing facade. Part of yeah. it was to push that back a little bit to try to soften that. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Can you tell me what the plate height was on the on the north? I mean the south side of that <clears throat> wall. Um, of the second floor off the uh, the existing no the the new oh the new uh, yes on the Fulton Street side what's the proposed plate height eight feet eight feet mm -hmm. okay because because I know that I, I think one of the you know I know you want to get away from a sloped ceiling but it oh I'm sorry it's seven four seven four yeah okay sorry Yeah. So you would have, you do have a, you would have a little bit of the rafter into the, or are you doing the ceiling, yeah. uh, the ceiling's heading up from that point? Yeah, the ceiling in the bathroom would be lower than, and then we can step it up in the bedroom. <coughs> in the closet on the right side, on the north side would be all sloped ceiling going down. But in bedroom two, there there would be a clip ceiling, and that's why we did that little dormer to try to raise the ceiling a little in there. So oh, in the oh the, oh yeah. in that okay yeah yeah I know they're preliminary drawings. I'm yeah not. <laughs> yeah that's okay. I got the I have the I'm scaling the the, the floor yeah line I'm just curious the here. the yeah. the because um, it I always look at. I always look at these houses and, and think, well, there it is. It's got the plate I write on it. I can't read it, though. Um, it's on uh, the proposed rear elevation there. Oh, on the rear so, elevation. So what we're looking at up on the screen, is that the left side elevation? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that on full. The so, Fulton side. So when, when I compare that with how, how the house looks right now, it's like there's there's nothing of the old house in that elevation that I see. Well, perhaps the three basement windows, but everything else is different. So there's it's as if the left side elevation of the existing house is not is is nowhere anywhere here. So that this facade has nothing of the original house, which for me is a problem. I think it is eight foot, by the way, all on that second floor. Yeah, I, I think now. it is yeah, too. I, have I, a, I think that I have a mark on the other one that is, shows it at seven feet, but I think it's eight. Yeah, feet. I, 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 on the I front think elevation, I have some floor lines that I'm scaling at seven, but. Yeah. Seven four, but I think in the back, it, in the rear elevation, it shows it at eight feet. Yeah. So that, that that's looks just like the that's the eave line on the is seven four. Yeah, that makes sense because you're right above the eave line of the if you have a six eight window head, you're yeah. you're right above that. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, that it just I'm just wondering like it it does seem to overpower the. Uh, existing home mm -hmm. and and I guess you know it, I, I would I'm trying to think of how how you could configure it to, to, to not overpower it and and kind of pull that bigger mass to the back left corner where where it would be mm -hmm. fine to be tall yeah and yeah that, we, we did fill up that back corner as well um, 
it's just such a small footprint of the first floor that to get the three bedrooms up there and yes. two baths, it really, it's hard to, to get that. I think we could pull down the eave line, the, the plate heights a little bit and do some slope ceilings. I don't know if that would do the trick or not, but um, that's something. I, that I think it would be a, it would <coughs> try. definitely be a start. Yeah, and I think sure. that, that, and, and I, it, it, it is that the fact that the, the roof, the original roof not coming through at all on the on the proposed left elevation. It is there is there a uh, is there an overhang? There's yeah. not much of an overhang there, but it, there's a standard overhang on the existing on the existing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and I'm not I'm not trying to design it. For you, I'm I'm trying to think of That's okay. ways to make it so that you know it, it is a diminutive structure, and I agree with you when you look at it from River Street, it it, it starts to work, but I think bringing down the plate heights on on that at that side would actually help with what Lisa was saying regarding the uh, <coughs> regarding doing trying to not have that second gable that further back gable start to overpower the the mass overpower the building but it is i know you are you are fighting a i'm just wondering you know it it, it, it seems like you kind of want to have what's proposed on the, the if you look at the side elevate or the 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 front elevation to the north, that brings that down, mm -hmm. and and that that's kind of the the feel that I think would start to work if you could get that on the south. But I don't know whether you can or not. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's a difficult problem. Maybe by sliding that mass over to the right on the front elevation and doing the yeah and 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 i i would really like to see some relief between the existing plane of the existing home and the and the second floor addition along fulton street i think i think that's that's that those sort of key elements are what i think has to start to happen and unfortunately I mean I I live in a historic home in the in the district also and a lot of houses in the historic district were story and a half and not a true two-story mm -hmm. homes right. and that does mean that you start to live in the eaves a bit mm -hmm. but but I think that you can solve some of that issue of headroom and still have uh, a lower plate height on the on the actual Fulton Street side. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, does the what does the commission think of? Um, I, I you know I kind of agree with that. You know I, I you have some pretty difficult challenges in meeting you know the, the request and um, I mean I suppose my biggest issue is kind of in line with everyone else and that is that you kind of lose the vision of the 1927 bungalow. Mm -hmm. um, when trying to meet the, the needs and the needs of you know the customer, the applicant, I mean there's some challenges, definitely. I don't know if an eyebrow, Paul, like across there, and I'm not an architect or a designer either, yeah, would I mean, help you know minimize that broad white wall or not. I I don't know, but I um, I think it is a little bit. It it I don't think it would be as broad. I, I I think that if it were, you know, I I think about that we did. There was a house on um, Fulton, um, the uh, at the corner, or it was Mary Bensini's old house. Uh, that would be at uh, Fulton and um, <coughs> Candace and Gary's home. But uh, I can't think of the address. But but we we <coughs> left the form of the roof that was there and built. There was a dormer that had relief at that point and and that that helped <coughs> them deal with the headrooms issues that were coming across 
And I think that starting to bring across that existing roof line coming back to kind of mimic what was happening, what the original house was, I think would help. Um, 609 Fulton, Fulton. yeah. Um, but it is a difficult problem and it, it uh, I understand, but I think doing those sort of things would help. I, I just, and I, I would really like to see some sort of relief between the seven foot addition in the back and the existing home. I think that that, that would be important to try to bring along. Uh, and pull in the second floor, you're saying? If, yeah, and then that would pull in the second floor enough, also, even if it was a foot or eight or 10 inches, somewhere around in there to, to just get the relief from, and then that, that existing roof could come across. Again, I, I, I shouldn't, I'm not trying to design. Oh, we're I'm, looking I'm, for I'm input. Not, this is what this meeting's about. So. Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to. I'm trying to to make it so that that we can get something, that get to a approve. point where we yeah. get approval. Yes. Because I we think appreciate that, that. And it's it's really, it would be really difficult to. <coughs> uh, it it is it, it's a difficult problem to have. I mean, it, the headroom is a huge issue. Obviously, when you see the pictures up there, yeah. that was not designed as a second floor at all and not even a story and a half. Mm -hmm. yeah. to, clarify, to clarify something, because I heard a yes and I don't think it was quite what you said. When you're talking about differentiation in the plane, you're talking about both the first and the second floor. Correct. Because right? you had mentioned second floor and said yes, and I just want to make sure you're... Yeah, you're I, I'm meeting. thinking the first, but I'm thinking that, that the addition could be in the same plane as the second floor. If you could pull that back, I, I don't know what, again, that, that does create building issues, right? Uh, um, I'm sure Augustine would, or you would agree with that, so. <laughs> you're saying on the Fulton would, Street side? You're, on the Fulton Street side, okay. yeah. I, I'm just, what I'm, what I'm trying to do is get definition of what the existing house was and also kind of lessen the mass on the Fulton Street side. And then that's gonna kind of follow through to the mass on the front side, which I, I the, the renderings are great because they really show us what it looks like. Mm -hmm. And and that that's a plus and a minus. Sometimes I think that if, <laughs> if yeah. you were looking at an elevation, you might not see as much of the mass of that Fulton Street side. So, um, did this, you have something to add, Michael? Well, no, I just want to make sure I'm understanding because I want to make sure it's clear. What I'm hearing you say is that at the first floor, that seven foot addition would be offset some distance, whether it's 10 inches, eight inches, a foot, but that line would carry up to the second floor and that would be the plane that that second floor would carry all the way through on the Fulton Street side to give you some roof plane. Is and maybe I'm, drag that that eave from the front across that to drag that eave the, the existing eave across. Mm -hmm. Leave the, it's you're not going to leave it, but have to rebuild it. Yeah, I mean, rebuild that, it, that, but it, pull it, it is a bit of a it's a bit of a false look, but but I think it it defines the house, mm -hmm. and I think that's that's trying, where we're that's we're where. not trying to hide that it's a second floor addition. We're trying to we're trying to yeah uh, just define it as, as a, the addition as an addition and not as a, not as the way it was originally built sure. and I think it it would I think it would it would actually you know I think it would bring that down a little bit mm -hmm. um, um, but go ahead well Paul not being an architect I'm really just struggling trying to understand what you're talking about I, on, on the Fulton side correct. okay I'm I'm looking at this as the house looks right now. Correct. <clears throat> All right. And I'm seeing this eave line right here. Correct. Which is not there. No, okay. it is not. So now what are you trying what are you saying? What I'm what I'm trying to say is in, in non architectural bring, terms. In, in non architectural terms, I wanna 
that original eave line, I want to hold that original. I want, I would like that original leave line to be reflected. And because it does come out a foot or a foot and a half or mm -hmm. there is an overhang there. Yes, yeah. There's some overhang there. Yeah. And, and, and then between pulling the second floor back, dropping the eave height a little, uh, dropping the eave height to be able to deal with some things, uh, to be able to bring the mass down, I think that would start to do some of the things that we're talking about. But I mean, I'm, I, again, I, I, I should caution myself because I don't, I don't want you to feel like I'm trying to design the house. I'm, I am trying to just think of ways that you could look at this and say, well, that, that, that's something we could do to mm -hmm. define, to lessen the mass that's on top of there and yet still try to get the uh, um, ceiling height. the ceiling heights that you actually need on the second floor. Yeah. So, yeah. so if I may, Carolyn, for the non-architects, yeah. um, I, I pulled this one up because the area that Paul is referencing is the blue area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you imagine that being set back approximately anywhere from eight to a foot further back, that okay. whole thing would be pushed back of the old house so you, so then you would see a piece of the roof yes. and this roof would continue across in here i see i see so it would help bring out and then what paul's also referencing is that if the plate height can be manipulated some so that and we and we've seen that in several other additions uh primarily up at uh like third and uh no at uh second and uh uh, Ford Street, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that one where they dropped the yes. plate and they yes. actually had some uh, some of the dormers popping up above the right. ridge line or right. the, the eave line. Right. But this is where Paul's been talking about trying to drop that plate or the the top of the wall is called mm -hmm. the plate, mm -hmm. dropping that down a little bit. So that would reduce some of the second floor mm -hmm. uh, wall area and mm -hmm. then bring that roof through. Is mm -hmm. is that a good summary, Paul? That's a very good summary. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I understand. So then, Paul. Your recommendations would be more true to the character of the 1927 bungalow? I'm not sure it's to the character of the bungalow, but it's trying to reflect what the bungalow, to, to give an indication of what was there. What used to be there. If, you know, if you remember when we had the, propos the first proposals for Graham's renovation, right? it was a very similar thing where the proposed expansion just swallowed up right, right. the original one. Right. And what, what I'm seeing, what, what I, the way I look at it, I tend to listen a lot before I make a lot of comments, so I'm not good to be first out of the bat. Okay. But um, the, way I, the way I'm seeing it and what I also hear from Paul is that right now the, the expansion is swallowing up the the current ex existing home mm -hmm. and i don't think there's anything wrong with the existing home absorbing the expansion so this way you don't lose the character and the look of the existing home mm -hmm. but there's you know as these homes have evolved over the years there's nothing wrong with expanding them because this one has been too mm -hmm. so you know that's you know i'm i'm in agreement with with paul in that you know the current look on the fulton street you lose the whole house, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, the original. And what we want to do is that these houses expand, they evolve over time, and that's fine. But we want to make sure that it stays with the original character. And mm -hmm. so the character, I think, here would be to show how the original house accepted an expansion rather than the expansion swallowing up, up the, the original house. house. Yes. And that's the same what happened with Grams, because right. you lost the whole character of that bungalow, and right. then... They listened to us, and then they made the changes, and voila. And, and George, uh, I remember the conversations we had uh, about Graham's, and I can remember you saying, this looks like you're sticking a shoebox on the corner of the building. I don't know if you remember yeah. that, but I do. Yes. Yeah. So, it, but like I said, that's just give you a little, little idea. That was, I, I'm, I see the same situation where the expansion is swallowing up the old house, and mm -hmm. we need to. Yeah. Yeah, I you agree. Know, not totally, you know, uh, swallow it up, but, you know, allow, once again, to be able to, I get it, you know, to stand, I'm 6'3", I, I understand, the, you know, the shower deal. So, uh, I concur. Okay. Right. 
the only other the only other thing that I would like to discuss is that does the commission have issues with the relocation of the windows on the Fulton Street side or is it you know is it well what is the purpose of well, the changing per the windows the purpose was to get the dine a view out of the dining room um, and a fireplace so that you can sit in the dining room and to have a fireplace in the sitting room uh, required us to split those windows to get the fireplace it's a gas fireplace it's small um, but it, we kind of took the, the, the triple window that was there and concept and, and slid it over to where the dining room was because that's that's where our view wants to be and we get great light in there uh, from that so currently there's a triple window in the living room and a double window in the back bedroom where the yellow you can see the yellow and we've kind of flip-flopped that and put the triple window where the dining room was in the double. double window we split up um, so we we would like to I mean, things are going to change because if we're going to offset that wall which I, I understand then that's going to change some stuff in the kitchen but I, th I think that the general arrangement of the rooms is probably going to stay about the same as this. How, how does that change uh, things in the kitchen if that wall is offset? Well, it's right now it sort of runs over the existing wall, so mm -hmm. now there'd be a bump in there. So we could work that out with cabinets or furring that wall out or something like that. So we'll work that out. That's, uh, but the that's what I'm saying. I think that it's not going to change the room arrangement. It's okay. still going to be there. It's just the, you know, maybe the island gets a little smaller so that we can take that 10 inches up or you know, 8 to 10 inches to get that break in the wall, which will make the whole wall seem smaller or, you know, it won't be, it'll define the addition more, which I think is what we're asking for. And, and looking at, at this facade right now, mm -hmm. okay, what are the yellow boxes supposed to mean? Those are the existing windows, the yellow boxes. Those are the existing windows? Yeah. Thank you, Michael, for putting those in. <laughs> so that's just a graphic representation of where the existing windows are on the Fulton Street side, and then the, rent, the, the architectural drawing shows where the windows are proposed to be. Okay. I'm trying to find it in here in our packet. If it helps, I can go to the floor plan and show you. So basically, no, I, the, I wanted, I Carolyn, wanted, the... What? The fireplace is now where the triple, is. triple windows were. So the first long yellow box <clears throat> is where the fireplace is in the proposal. Oh, I see. Okay. 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 So they're flip-flopping the triple to the other side and splitting the double. And these aren't historic windows. These were windows replaced like 10 years ago or something that are being pulled out. Is that right? Correct. The, but are, but are these the, the openings? They though, were the in the historic, historic locations. They were just replaced. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so these are the historic locations. Correct. Okay. Well, the yellow is the historic location. The, the non-yellow is the proposed locations. Okay. So Carol, find your existing Fulton Street those side. Those are in the historical location. Carol, if you look at the, on the screen, this, one shows this is the existing yeah. condition. The yellow, the windows are highlighted in yellow, and those same yellow boxes then transfer to how they, what happens on the new. Okay, go, go back to what what's there now. All right. Okay. Same orientation. Same, same orientation. Yes. Okay. Same window style and everything. Same I see. I see. Kind of okay. Grouping. Okay. With that question being raised, is there a possibility to relocate the fireplace to another spot in that living room? Um, that changing room? I don't know how, the, I don't, I don't know how the arrangements are. It's a direct vent fireplace. Yeah. Yeah. I understand it's a direct vent. So there's, a, yeah. there's a lot of options with fireplaces. Yeah, there's only one wall in that room. <laughs> I, I understand that, but I, I mean, as it is now, but you're going to be doing some redesign. It's just something I'm throwing out there. That uh -huh. I, I don't know if the concern would be as much for the insertion of a new triple window but if you're trying to with the discussion that's been held about trying to uh you know retain the character of the original bungalow 
it would seem that the, the major room, the, made, the original living room, should have its original window configuration retained from what I'm hearing mm -hmm. from the commission mm -hmm. about preserving the memory of the original bungalow. Mm -hmm. Michael, can you go back to what Fulton Street looks like right now again, please? Okay. Back end. Okay, I like the rhythm of the two, three, and one in the front. That's a nice rhythm. Okay, all right, thank you. So, Lisa, do you have an opinion about the windows location? I mean, it, the the one one good thing about this being painted brick, you're going to be able to get everything yeah. looking right. Correct. And you yeah. won't be <laughs> it won't be a uh, patch job <laughs> patch job from your mason to try to figure yeah. out how to get everything. Well. Um, we do try to keep those openings in place and we do try to maintain what was and, and to, to move them does sort of defeat, defeat the purpose of, of retaining the existing bungalow and, and it's its features. Um, you know, I understand the space planning challenge that comes along with that. Um, but I think if, if we were to retain those openings, then it's once again just another nod to the bungalow of the 20s. I agree. Me too. Can we look at the stairway for a second, please? The stairway coming into the house looks gigantic. It's taller. No, we're not changing the stairway. You're not changing the stairway? Inside or outside stairs, exactly the same. Okay. Or just the angle or of the picture. Perhaps that's the angle, yeah, of the picture. Yeah. Well, well, what, what about the- not to change it. <laughs> Pardon me? <laughs> I what? think it might have just shifted scale a little okay. bit. Okay, that, I suppose slightly. that could be. Yeah, but it's existing stair will remain. Okay, and, and that's staying. We may work on the railing. It's not okay. a, like a new, ra it's a, not a historic what? railing. What do what do my fellow commissioners think about these, the gigantic um, uh, curb that goes on on part of the of the, um, the the front walkway? That's existing though, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. We're not proposing any change to that. That whole front really? entry has <laughs> not changed. It's, this is uh, this is there now. Yeah. yeah. It, you know, maybe the rendering exaggerates it a little bit by accident, yeah. but it just makes it more white, but it is there. It's, oh, okay. I'll have to go back and look again. There are pictures. Again. Michael could go okay. back to the pictures of that. It's, okay. Okay. All right. It shows it pretty close. Well, it is, yes. It's, yeah. But I, I know what you're saying. <laughs> That's... It's always the one picture you don't have. I know. <laughs> ah, <laughs> not quite there. Yeah, I know. I, I might have just a, move just a little bit. You more. couldn't take one in the front door. Okay. Yeah, I, I got. I probably have one. I got a bunch of pictures okay. printed That's out. Okay. That's okay. It, I okay. get it. Yeah, we're we're you know, there's there's a budget involved here too. <laughs> we're oh, trying yeah. not to change stuff when we of don't course. have to change it. So You're right. You're we don't. Right. We're not changing it for for fun it's, of course. it's like just well i will go back and look really at this house one more time thing of getting <laughs> the rooms in is what's yeah. driving this design right. it's it's not a right. it's not an ego thing or uh, trying to be flashy actually these guys are the most uh sort of subtle want to keep it as simple looking as possible they feel like it it's maintaining the character mm -hmm. uh and and so 
we really appreciate your respectful comments and, and this forum of the way you guys speak is really pleasant and I really appreciate you coming out on a rainy cold night <laughs> and giving us this input you don't know how valuable it is and we, it, your service to this community is really appreciated and it keeps Geneva looking great so well, that's what we try to do and Michael, I really appreciate you putting this presentation together so that it's so understandable because of your little adding those little window things and color coding it is just invaluable. It's, it's all about getting the message across to yeah. so everybody understands what we're looking at. Yeah, yeah, and you really understand it, how to do that very well. Mm -hmm. Any other final comments from the commission? Don, anything? Lisa, George, oh. Jewel, mm -hmm. well, I can I ask one question of the commission? Just and is it's not a recommendation you do this, but um, we've struggled before with some contemporary additions on historic houses. Um, I'm, I'm listening to everybody talking about the height here mm -hmm. and that trying to put a gable roof on the addition is um, adding the height that I think a lot of people are concerned with. And I don't know if this matches your your uh, program or your your architectural sensibilities, but um, is this a case where perhaps the addition should be a very clean, simple box inserted into the historic bungalow, and maybe it's a flat roof or a shed roof or something? Um, we, we've we've struggled with other ones that really were trying to put contemporary additions in places that didn't fit at all. But from listening to the concern, it's not so much about the the uh, floor plan or, the, or the, 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 the horizontal mass, it seems that most of the discussion is about the vertical mass and inserting something that preserves the bungalow. So I'm just throwing that out there um, so that everybody has, has that on their radar if that's a potential or if that's a, totally, a total miss and you don't think that's appropriate, I'm just throwing it out there because we've, we've discussed it before. before. Are, you, are you suggesting that the third front facing gable that is the addition not have that appearance and somehow that would minimize the addition itself it's just, I thought as, that as, myself. I, as I've listened to the conversation I've just thought some other projects where people have tried to put a contemporary uh, slant on a historic house it hasn't been successful but in this one it, I just thought it might really reduce that whole uh, front and again it might not it might not fly with either your your uh, architectural sensibilities for this project which is fine I just as I've been listening to the conversation and thinking back to other projects this seems like one that might be a natural to explore especially if that is set uh, the addition is set back a few inches and you preserve some of that roof it might be you know keep it simple as simple as possible so it becomes unobtrusive um, I don't know it was just I, I was just thinking back to other conversations this commission and uh, and it seems like the height of that roof ridge is really bothersome to the commission. So it was just something I threw out there. So it was on the record that it could be discussed if you thought that had any merit. I, and you're talking about the front edition? The front the elevation? The entire second floor edition could be a box inserted in the, into the bungalow, potentially. So Actually, nobody's mentioned the height of the ridge. It's more the, the setback off, off the face and breaking down the scale a little bit it seems well, like. I think I was mentioning the height I, of the ridge. I, I think the height of the ridge is directly related to the lowering okay. the plate height I think that that's gonna okay. fall off I think I think that 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 I, I think that it it would be I, I look at the height of the the cross gable I guess the one that goes to uh, to the north Okay. And on the addition, and I thought that seemed like a plate height, or that's a kind of a ridge height that I could, not not that I'm looking for, you know, but that that ridge height there seems more would be might be more appropriate. But again, it, it really, I think once you start to play with it and get into it, you know how how that all works. I I'm not really sure. 
I'm a huge fan of modernism. So, yeah. Uh, but uh, and it's like, give me an opening, and I'd gladly put a flat roof addition onto it. But I'm not sure that that would fly with you guys in the end. I would be glad to try it. If something. Like to see. So, Paul. Yes. Okay. I'm looking at this. Yeah. All right. Are Are you talking about? Opening this up here and putting a shed addition here, so I, just a portion of. of I, I don't think it. I don't think I. I wasn't. I wasn't going that far. I was just kind of saying that bringing the plate height down will bring, uh, will naturally bring the ridge height down, yes. which will kind of bring to the point that Lisa was saying of, and 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 you know you look at these things and and it's like, it's almost like, you look at that front elevation. And I know that it doesn't, it, it, an elevation is not a great way to look at yeah, this. Yeah. It's better to look at it in, 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 the, in yeah. the 3D, which it doesn't, it, it, it still, I think if you off, if it wasn't lining up so much, it might be better too. You know, I think that's, that's that whole shifting towards the north with the mass, I think that's what I'm thinking. So, but I, I'm not, I, I'm not. <sighs> Did you need the? Do you need that the little windows above for light and vent? No. No. That's you mean up in the in the up attic? in the gable. No, no, no. It was just a yeah. Fill, I, in, fill well, in the that, space. Yeah, but yeah. We were trying to match the existing roof pitch and the the existing, like you know, we can't really just work a shed off the existing roof because the ridge is so low that the shed w would give us a four foot plate height down yeah, at the exactly. wall. So we need to raise the ridge someplace, um, yeah. and that's why I think where Michael's suggesting was well, you could just do a flat roof that was very foreign to the box but distinctly different yeah um, like the schroeder house or something like that yeah i, I just threw out there because i think you've got a lot of design challenges to right uh discuss and pull back and so i i just want to throw that out we do encourage contemporary editions when the, they make sense and a lot of times they haven't made sense i'm not sure it works in this case i'm not pushing that idea it's just that from listening to the discussion, and I thought it kind of got missed that p there was an issue with some of the commissioners about that yeah, front gable. No, thank you. And um, th there's there's a lot of ways to drop the plate, so have a gable roof, and, and do some things that might actually end up being more complicated. If you look at the house that's second and forward, um, so, uh, that would be the uh, the um, it's the white house that uh, they enlarged both to the east and put it. Oh, the, it's a Greek, yeah. little Greek okay. revival, yeah. one yeah. and a half story. Mm -hmm. and they, mm -hmm. But uh, I, I've had some people say that's a very busy um, oh, a, yeah. a facade, and that might be what happens here. If you try to drop the plate and do some dormers to get windows in, it might get very busy and compete otherwise. So I just I just was throwing out several things because, like I said, you've got a lot of design challenges that I've heard tonight. So you've got a lot of uh, thinking and design to do. So I was just trying to throw out another option that might be something to look at and say hey this makes some sense or doesn't make any sense is that is that like the building where the owner was like six foot eleven and they had to raise it I don't think he was that tall but, but he was uh, tall but yeah yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah that's 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 uh, under construction right now no that's a no, different one what I'm thinking is, is complete it's it's the White House that uh, second and uh, it was in really bad shape and they had to tear off a part, a part of the house because it was just unsalvageable so it was on second second and second. it's on the north side of no northeast corner of ford and second ford and second okay but i kind of get where michael's going because the thing is when you look at the proposed with the three different roof heights there you're naturally drawn to the highest one mm -hmm. whereas if you eliminate that graduation of heights there and you just have a different kind of a roof plane there you visually still see the bungalow 
there's there's pros and cons to all all yeah, the I, comments I that have been made. Like that, I just and, I, and that I, might even work well with with the ceiling heights inside on the second floor. It's hard. I'm I'm. I have some hope in what Paul was saying of moving the mass to the right and maybe dragging that rake up to a kind of reverse of this and using that quadrant and then and then doing maybe a simple gable the other way and just keeping it simple and pulling it back from that Fulton Street side and it wouldn't be so contemporary but it would be just a, a simple block, right. two-story block, or mm -hmm. you know, with lower eaves and some pop-through dormers or something. I think you've got a lot. I think you've got a lot of feedback here that gives you a lot of different directions to discuss and mm -hmm. and come back with a solution. Yes. And, and understand, I'm not an architect. I'm a car guy. So you know, okay. <laughs> you, know you know, these guys are in a different avenue. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Oh. You look like you're about to uh, well, have another uh, comment. So, <laughs> just one last. I, we don't want to. I don't want to over talk, talk this. So, the existing ridge height is maybe a little bit higher than the new plate height, give or take. Right? It's a little bit higher. Yeah, barely. With me on yeah. that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, actually, I'm not. I can tell you. We're looking at a flat. Yeah, I can tell you. Drawing here. Um, yeah, it's slightly it's higher. Slightly, yeah. Yeah, eight inches, about nine inches. Okay. <laughs> just it, we looked at like how could we keep that, and there's just not enough. As you could see in those inside pictures, they, there's not enough height to slope down from that ridge. Yeah, it's like I mean, you have live valleys. Ridge, the ridge is at interior, inside right? that room is at seven feet. Yeah. So it's just like seven feet to the ridge. Right. And you're supposed to have in a bedroom a certain amount of seven feet area of ceiling. So the whole second floor is basically doesn't meet any new codes for ceiling height in rooms by minimum room size. And um, doors okay. aren't six eight, they're cut on angles. <laughs> Bathroom you can't stand up in yeah. hardly anywhere. You can't get lights over the sink. I mean, it's really, as as Michael said, it wasn't really made for this. This was inserted into it. Um, okay, thank you. But yeah, it's somehow we're going to have to raise a substantial part of the roof to get this program of three bedrooms in there, which I I don't think is unreasonable to to have three bedrooms in the house, and they're not huge bedrooms or anything. So we're hoping that somehow you'll allow us to increase the mass of this house, and uh, we can work on all these suggestions and try to diminish it as much as possible would be the goal, I think. Yeah. Bring out the yellow trace and start yes. thinking. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe your sketch up. So yeah. you no, I start. still use trace. <laughs> Good, I'm glad to hear it. I switched to white a couple of years ago, which really threw oh. off the, the drafting supply company because they yeah. were used to me ordering yellow trays. <laughs> I like the really yellow, yellow trays. I got, I got, yeah, I got some of that if you need it. <laughs> Blue pen on that, it really yeah. pops. Yeah, um, that's right. How <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't copy well, as well. Do, you, do you, um, you have what you, I mean, we're, 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 we're glad you're here. We're glad that you're trying to do something, and we're glad that we're trying. I I think we all kind of head to the same location where we want you guys to be happy as homeowners and buildable, but we also want to be able to to follow the standards that we have within sure. the historic district. I mean, I'm I'm encouraged that. I feel like you're saying you would allow us to increase the mass of it if we can try to make some breaks and setbacks and diminish it and that you're not crazy about the front right now <laughs> is right. what I'm getting. Yeah. So. Uh, I think so. With that, um, unless anyone's got anything else, I think mm -hmm. um, thank you so much for coming thank in. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. We'll see you again. We'll look forward to seeing it again. Okay. With that, 
We have the secretary's report. I have no report this evening. You have no report. Okay. Wow. Do we have any new business from the commission? Do you have any updates on, do we expect to see anything on the mill race? Uh, the the uh, demolition request for 40 State Street is waiting for the applicant to uh, make requested corrections to the submittal. Okay. The demolition request is um, pending uh, corrections and, and additional information from the applicant. So okay. they've got... Um, there's two different deadlines because it's two different processes. processes. Um, so one is coming up here in November shortly, and the other one is in December. But they're okay. not allowed to do that unless we end up revoking somehow the, the, the they historic could, district they that can surrounds still, They can still... You can demolish a historic structure, correct? Right. The, pro the process is they w if, if the demolition is um, denied by this, this commission, then it would go to the city council mm -hmm. for uh, an appeal. Mm -hmm. And the, there would be a secondary, there's a secondary public hearing the way it's being set up that if demolition was approved, then the historic landmark designation status would be removed from that parcel of the property. So any, any build, and just again, I, I say this all the time to people who call um, about different properties, any property in the historic district is subject to a demolition request. It's up to this commission uh, to determine whether that request is uh, reasonable and appropriate for the property. So it will become, it will come before us at some point before they ever take it down. There, there will be a public hearing before yeah. this commission um, for the, the proposed demolition of the property, yes. That'll be an exciting day. <laughs> well, only, would only if, if it would only goes to city council if there's a recommendation for denial and they appeal it. If, if it's approved at this board, if it, at this level, it goes no further. Yes. Correct. Right, but I just want to make it clear that is, is there any is there any uh, mechanism to you know document do a hard have a survey is that is that correct? The commission has a lot of options as to what they can request as part of a demolition review. Um, it could be it could require um, rectified photographs, which are scaled photographs. It could require HABs drawings. It could require, um, there, there may be additional information that the commission may seek in making its determination. So um, when we get to the demolition ordinance or the demolition request before this commission, I expect you're all gonna wanna reread the demolition ordinance and, and uh, you'll probably have questions for me as, the, uh, as it proceeds. So, um, but there are, there are things that the commission can request as part of a approval for a demolition. Okay. Without, with that... Uh, Just to elaborate on that, the, the best case to go back to is if you remember the um, Sixth Street School demolition of uh, where the library stands now, um, the, the condition for that was an update of our survey. Correct. That's what we got out of that uh, demolition request. Okay. Um, anything, nothing else from the commission, from the public? Do you have anything to add? I do, if you don't mind. I don't mind at all. I kind of expected it. So. Hal Watts, Preservation Partners, the Fox Valley. Actually, all I wanted to do is uh, to invite you to our, our next event. Uh, we have winter lights in the Fabian Japanese Garden starting next Friday. And uh, we're really excited because the city of Geneva uh, supported a grant that well, we did end up uh, being awarded from uh, ComEd of the uh, Metropolitan Mayor's Council. So that is going to help us. If any of you went there last year, uh, there's no light in the parking lot because it's forest preserve. This grant is going to allow us to provide some lighting in the parking lot. So hopefully everybody will be able to find their way. Just keep following the lights. We just got a longer string of lights, basically, is what we did. So <laughs> hopefully, if you can find the entrance to the Forest Preserve, you'll be able to find your way to the Japanese <laughs> Garden. So hopefully you guys can come out to that. So that's all I wanted to do.
Thank you. Thank you. With that, um, can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.